Hello, everyone. Um, so I'm, I'm going to talk about uh, generics today. Uh, pardon me if I'm uh, a bit stuttering because I haven't spoken in front of uh, an audience for a while. Uh, it's been a while I've seen a lot of uh, people sitting together and listening to a talk. If tears come down my eyes, like, uh, don't be startled. You know. It's a joke, it's a joke. You know. I'm not going to cry. You know. Okay, so um, a quick introduction to, to generics. Um, uh, let me start here. So, so first, don't, don't panic. Uh, you've, it's the first time you heard about generics and you say, hey, you know what, is, is Google going to introduce a, a very complicated uh, a concept and uh, I, I don't know how to use it and then so on. Um, it's actually not that difficult a concept and uh, the Go implementation is relatively easy to to understand yeah in fact um i think i i just took a couple of days to to I, i'm not boasting or anything right it is really that pretty easy to a couple of days to just uh, really understand it and I'll, I'll run through what it is and then you'll see what i mean okay so i'll start off with uh first talking about what generics is and um and it's a little bit it's a bit lengthy but um i'll try to talk it through so so sometimes we have uh, uh data structures or algorithms and um, we use these data and structures and algorithms uh, on different data types, right? So uh, you can use it on an int, or you can use it on a float, or you can use it on, on anything else. Um, but it's the same algorithm, or it's the same data structure, or it's the same function, right? So uh, an example is, for example, you want to do a, a sort. You don't necessarily just sort uh, an int, but you can also want to sort a float, sort a string, and so on and so forth. And um, in Go, and uh, if you want to implement an algorithm, you do need to specify the data type you want to use. So you can't run away from that uh, uh, because Go is a uh, statically typed programming language, right? Like many uh, statically typed programming language, you do need to specify the, the type that you want to use. Um, generic Zen is a, is a feature in a programming language that allows you to write code for a, a generic data type. Okay, so what it means is you don't really need to uh, specify the uh, data type, right? So, so that's it, really. That's, that's what generics is, okay? So you don't need to use a uh, specific data type for your code, and uh, you're free to, to basically write code to, uh, to do the stuff that you want to do uh, without having to worry about the specifics of the data type. So that's what generic programming is. It's uh, not... Uh, is not unique. It's actually available in a uh, many programming languages. Of course, it's not really so applicable for uh, dynamic programming language, right? Because dynamic programming languages don't care about the data type. So it's really more for uh, statically typed programming languages. Okay. So conceptually, it is quite easy. Um, so let, let me try to just get a little bit in depth on this. Um, the example on the right here, even go. If you want to add two ints together, we're using a function. What you would do is uh, you, you do something like that. Uh, your logic, which is uh, A plus B, remains the same in two, two functions. But actually, you need to literally write two functions. And you need to put in uh, int or float 64, right? Or, or whichever data type they're using. Because, um, because there's no generics previously in, uh, in Go. Yeah. So... What generics allow you to do is to just write one single function to, to do both. Okay, so generics is the term that's been used in, uh, in Go. Um, it's also the term that's been used in Java. In fact, I think Java popularized the, uh, the term generics uh, in, in some other languages as well. But if you use some other programming languages, you'll find the, uh, the same concept, but it's called differently, right? The Scala, Julia, Haskell, they call it parametric polymorphism. Uh, those who still use C++, uh, uh, it's uh, templates. And uh, if you have read this uh, book by the Gang of Four, they call it the parametric types. But the concepts are the same. Um, they might talk about some differences, minor differences, but generally, this is what it is. Basically, you write code without having to think about the data type that you use. Okay, You can uh, actually use the same code on different data types. That's what generics is. 
Now, um, Go didn't have generics for a long time, uh, since its inception, in fact. And, um, and a lot has been written about it. And uh, uh, basically, this is what the, uh, the Go team actually wrote about. Russ Cox is one of the, uh, the leaders in the Go team. He wrote that uh, this, right? He said, the generic dilemma is this. Do you want slow programmers, slow compilers, and bloated binaries, or slow execution times? It's quite controversial, right? A lot of people got really turned off by this. Yeah, he's, he's actually kind of a very blunt person. Um, and then, of course, in the Go FAQs, it's a little bit more toned down. But generally, what he's trying to say is that um, when they designed the, um, the programming language, they, they knew about this, but they deliberately left it out because uh, they didn't think that it was that important. Okay. But a lot of Go developers thought otherwise. Okay. Uh, just in the and, and this is an annual Go developer survey that's been done for many, many years. Um, in 2020, among the 26% of the respondents who said Go lacks language features they need, 88% of them said that they, they wanted generics as a feature. Okay, that's like a lot. If you look at the next feature they wanted is better error handling. Right? So uh, Coincidentally, these are the two topics we talk about today. So, um, anyway, so generics was something that a lot of people wanted. And uh, so, so there were proposals along the way, and uh, there were a lot of design proposals. It came up, uh, it got debated hotly on, and uh, some of it were thrown away, some of it, the features were collected. And eventually, there was a uh, proposal that came out on the 13th of January, 2021. That's just last year. Um, and it uses a, a mechanism called type parameters. Okay, so I took a snippet out of this. This is was uh, the uh, uh, this was the uh, uh, issues that was added into the GitHub to uh, propose using type parameters for generic programming. Okay, it was uh, uh, proposed by these two gentlemen. Uh, one is Ian Lance Taylor, the other one is uh, Rob Grissimer. And of course, there was a uh, hotly debated about. Um, you look through this particular issue; they had 400 over uh, comments. Right? There was like a lot of debates about it. Some of it like quite fiercely debated. But at the end of the day, um, it was accepted uh, uh, by Russ Cox, okay, who said that uh, you know whatever he said earlier on. So um, it was accepted on the February uh, 11th, 2021. That's one year ago, and just. How long is it? Just two months ago, right? 15 March 2022, when Go 1.11 was released, it included this particular implementation for generics called type parameters. Okay, so, so that's the, a little bit of history of how generics came about. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the, uh, the implementation itself. Okay. So um, the generics in Go uh, 1.18, it's uh, implemented using a mechanism called type parameters. So what it does, uh, what, what it is, is that uh, functions now have something called uh, type parameters. So you have your normal parameters, which are in uh, uh, the round brackets, and then you have this thing called type parameters, which are in the square brackets. Um, and each type parameter have something called a type constraint. Um, the type constraints are actually interfaces. And the... Uh, and then they also added one new thing called um, any. So any, the A and Y, is a type constraint. But it is also an alias for interface, at the empty interface. You know, if you, you use interfaces before, you, you remember there's an interface that has nothing in it. It's just like two uh, uh, curly brackets. Um, this is called the empty interface. So instead of writing the empty interface, they, uh, the new Go 1.18 now has a keyword called any that represents the empty interface, okay? So these are the main features. Because if you read the proposal, it's actually a, a um, and uh, the proposal is uh, here. You read the proposal, it's a pretty long document, but um, generally speaking, these are the features that are in uh, generics, okay? So what I talked about earlier on, this, this is what it is. I, I don't have it, but, uh, so this is a square bracket, okay? Um, this is a little bit off. I don't know why, but the, 
this t here is basically the type parameter. Uh, this any here is the uh, type constraint. Okay, um, it is any here, but then it could be int, it could be float, uh, it could be a union of int and float, and, and so on and so forth. The constraint basically says what kind of uh, types this parameter could be. Okay, so um, a bit more wordy. Type constraints allow only specific operations on the type parameter. And this is uh, implemented using an interface. So constraints are actually interfaces. And any is a special keyword that's an alias for the empty interface. Okay, um, You could actually create an interface with a uh, primitive type like uh, int. But you could also union them right using the, uh, the uh, vertical bar operator uh, to create union of types, which means that it can represent any of these ones. And then you have this little squiggly uh, tilde. This means that any customized types that are based on these primitives are also uh, part of the constraints. Okay, so this basically defines the type constraint. So it's not that difficult. You have uh, type parameters, and then you have type constraints. And constraints basically constrain the, the parameters. That's that's about it. Okay, so at the end of the day what can we do? So if you look at the uh, earlier two, um, two, two functions I wrote, you have the add int and add float. Instead of the add int and add float, now you have just one function called add. And in, in this add, you have a t, which is type parameter, and then it allows int and float, where you union uh, both of them. And in the, uh, the normal parameters, now a and b are now of type t. Right, previously, if you saw A and B, they are type int or type float64. Float now they are of type T. Okay, and your code is just return A plus B, right? As before, no change. Instead of two functions, now you just need one function. If you look at it the, uh, from a top level view, this essentially is what generics 1.18 in Go, right? Sorry, generics in Go 1.18. Right, implemented using type parameters. Not difficult. Okay, um, an additional thing that, so this is, this is additional. Um, Go also provided a constraints package. It is not part of the standard library. Um, it's part of the experimental library, right? So you have uh, uh, golang.org slash x slash exp. Uh, that's the, uh, the package name. And this package provides you a number of constraints you can just use out of the box. Um, actually, you don't need them at all, right? Because it's just like uh, the shortcut way. Instead of writing int, you uh, you union an int and a float and, and so on, right? They just provide a, a number. Right? But, but the one that is, is kind of interesting is something called an ordered constraint um, that defines all the types that support uh, these operators, the uh, uh, greater than, less than, equals to, and not equals to operators. Okay, so if I look at the same code again as I did just now, instead of uh, uh, int and uh, instead of int and float, what did I do is I define one constraint called number. Now t is of uh, uh, the constraint is number, so the, the type parameter t is constrained by a number, and then same similarly a and b is of type t. Okay, so so this is using the constraints package. Okay, so that's a very, very general way of using constraints. But this actually impacts uh, the, the, I would say, uh, the standard um, existing data structures in, in Go. So Go has uh, four default data structures. Okay, arrays, slices, uh, maps, and struts, right? So array and slices are basically almost the same thing, right? Array is, is uh, a slice is basically an OLA on top of uh, array. Um, so we just talk about array, okay? Um, a map is a mapping between a key and a value. And a strut is basically customized data. So you can create any data uh, structure that you want using that. So I'm going to talk about how generics influences struts and slices. Okay, but before I do that, um, I wanted to show this uh, uh, show how this influences using a uh, data structure, okay, um, a strut. And this data structure is the, the very, uh, it's one of the most popular ones, it's called a stack. 
right? And within the stack, you have uh, uh, two methods. Basically, it's uh, push and you have pop, okay? You get peak and then you have is empty. It's just like extra stuff. Essentially, you just look at push and pop here. Now, if I use it the way pre 1.18, you need to define um, what is the data structure. Oh, sorry, what is the data type? Here is a string. So you can only push string in and you can only pop, you only return the string, right? If you now need to add in a, an int, you have to create an int stack. You want to do a float, you need to create a float stack. Right? If you want to have a, your own specialized struct, struct uh, and, and you will push into a stack, then you have to create that specialized struct. Right? So that was before 1.18. Now with generics, um, okay, so this is a very quick example of uh, how I do a quick test of, of this. I, it passes. Um, I prepared this in case I couldn't actually run this. And it turned out to be true, I can actually run this code. Um, so now if I use this using generics, using type parameters and constraints, let's say I use the constraint called the uh, constraints.ordered. Okay, so look at the, the differences here. You have a, a T stack. So T stack is the, uh, the stack that I've just created. But now I need to put into the uh, square brackets the uh, uh, type, right? And uh, when I define the strut, I need to uh, specify the type parameter and the constraint. Um, in the receiver itself, you also need to put in the uh, type uh, parameter, okay? And then now we can use this. Now this is the definition of the strut, but let's see how we can use it. Um, let's use it the same way, right? This is exactly the same way I use it for string earlier on, the uh, string stack. Okay, stack dot push, you push, 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 then you peek, you pop and do a check. Everything runs okay. I do the same thing, exactly the same thing. It's still push, 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 peek, pop, pop, and uh, everything runs okay. What's the difference here? The difference, if you look at the T stack, I need to specify what is the type here. You see the blue at right at the top, uh, I can't point to it, it's a bit too far away for me to point to. Uh, string, right? So you can put in all the string. Now I need it in an int. What do I do? So I specify as an int. Okay, then I push, 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 peak, pop, pop, right? So I, now I can push ints and I can uh, pop ints. Okay, if I change that to a float, it will be the same and so on and so forth. Okay, so this is how I do it. Uh, with strut and with uh, slices. Now, there's one one thing that I, I wanted to mention here is quite interesting, um, which is any. So if you use any as a replacement and say here you you push any uh, and then you pop any, right? So you take a look here. Um, I push three strings and I push an int. So basically now the stack can have both string and int. It's kind of weird. Uh, and if you are developing Go for a while, it seems like, wow, you know, this, this totally blows my mind. It's not, I'm not sure whether I'm very comfortable with this kind of code, but yeah, this is possible if you use any, okay? You can't do this if you were using the type parameters and constraint, by the way. Huh? So if you were using it like this, you now cannot push uh, an int and then a string afterwards because you already specified that you only want ints. Okay, you can only do it when it's an any. Right, so that was uh, struts and slices. Let's talk about the maps here. Um, again, I would use another data structure to, to explain this. I will use the, the set, okay? For just, just to explain what a set is, uh, set the, the base here. Um, a set is basically a, a container of uh, unique items. Right? Every item must be unique. You cannot have a duplicate uh, item. Okay, uh, that's number one. Number two is that it's uh, it's unordered. So the order that you put it in is not necessarily the order you get it. And every time it could be different or it could be the same. Okay, so that's a, a set. Now the best way to implement a set, for, for from my perspective, or the easiest way, right? There are many ways of doing it. I think it's just using the keys for a map because the keys for the map are unordered and they must be unique, 
Okay, and uh, that's the example that I'm using here. Um, again, I have a string, so I, I ignore the val value altogether. It doesn't really matter the value because I'm only interested in the, uh, the, the key. Uh, so uh, items map uh, string. So these are all strings. And um, when I uh, add, is I add a string, I just put a, a int value. I'll never use it anyway. Okay, so that's the uh, set data structure. Very quickly, this is how I use it. I add string, okay, and I check. Uh, it looks a bit complicated, but basically because it's unordered, I need to um, I need to sort it first and then uh, before I compare it. But that's that's basically it, right. So that's uh, testing the the set. Um, now this is using this is using generics. If you look here, we have this new thing called comparable. So comparable is a constraint. Um, in the new generics, there are two keyword constraints. First is any, which is an alias for interface. The second is uh, comparable. Okay, comparable is a constraint that uh, which types that support equals and not equals to. Okay, so it's uh, comparable. And if you are putting generics in a map, you need to make the key comparable. That's the number one requirement. Okay, the value you can put anything in string, flow, or whatever you want. Okay, once you put compare, you can even put struts, by the way. So uh, uh, your customized strut can be a comparable. Now, I, I put it this way. Again, if you see the receiver here, the receiver here, the receiver here, you need to put in the key value. Okay, that's, that's important. Um, now, I, I add the string. And uh, this, this is the same test code I, I ran earlier on except the way I created the, the set is different. It runs. And I test it again with int, and it runs as well. Okay, so, so this is how it works with uh, maps. Right, so I, I just very briefly described how you would do this with uh, uh, generically, uh, how generics work, and then uh, with struts and with slices, and then finally with maps. I hope this has been useful. Um, the code, if you're interested, is in the third line here, is in the GitHub repository. And the uh, first is my, uh, is my blog, where I basically write a, a lot of uh, Go stuff. If you're interested, please take a look. In fact, uh, I wrote this deck, and then after that, I, I uh, sort of made it into a blog post as well. So you can check it out if you... Uh, if you wanted to have a readable version of the other slide. Okay, so that's my talk today. Thank you.